we have just completed uh, one week of deliberations uh, on uh, issues related to rice research and, and directing particular attention to the global rice supply situation. It's been in the headlines every day for the last several weeks that uh, a number of countries around uh, the world are facing uh, problems with supplying sufficient rice. Other countries have ceased or, or blocked their rice exports. Uh, this has caused a lot of concern around the world and uh, a lot of questions have been asked about what is the source or what is the reason behind these, these shortages. Well, the short answer is that the world has been eating uh, more rice than it has been producing. Uh, we have seen for a number of years global rice stocks declining and the question is why, why is that? Well, we've had a demand, international demand or global demand for rice has increased. That's been driven by population growth, by economic growth. Um, we have had uh, uh, production problems because of, uh, of storms in Bangladesh. We've had some pest outbreaks in, in Vietnam. We, of course, have had the biofuels uh, mania in, in a number of countries have diverted uh, food crops away from food and into biofuels. Uh, and uh, we've had the conversion of prime rice lands from agricultural production to urban uses, uh, residential areas, shopping malls, etc. And we've had water being diverted away from agriculture and into other, uh, other uses, uh, industrial uses, for example. So all of these different factors have come together to really uh, have a negative impact on rice supplies. And of course, if your rice supply shrinks and demand grows, then you have uh, you have a, a, an economic response, which is higher prices. I think it's particularly um, timely to have the Erie Board of Trustees meeting this week when rice is so much in the headlines in Asia. Erie has been established now for 48 years as an international collaboration working to address the problems of the poor, and particularly the poor who depend on rice as their state of crop. We are in a unique position to bring together the experience and insights of international experts uh, together with the scientific partnerships that ERI has developed with a whole range of national agricultural research and extension services in rice producing countries around the world to be able to address rice supply. And ERI of course has been involved in this problem uh, before our work in the context of the Green Revolution and in producing new high-yielding varieties of rice was specifically aimed at the situation where we found the world's poor who were dependent on rice badly affected by lack of supply and by price. So our focus this week has been very much on looking at both the short, medium and long-term opportunities. I'm looking to see how we can actually have the same Green Revolution. And also, we are aware that Africa now consumes a lot of rice, most of it imported from the Asian continent. And so, as uh, we see, uh, reducing uh, uh, rice supply, uh, increasing costs, we are aware that uh, Africa also is suffering. Already, we are reading about the riots on the African continent because of rising food prices. And clearly, rice also is also in short supply. So, as the Asian continent continues to experience uh, rice shortages and having a rice crisis, Africa is clearly affected and the whole, continent, the whole world really is affected. So this has global implications and we hope that uh, as uh, a board here, we can begin to... The world of uh, prices uh, should be uh, caused by the height in the rice price. Uh, this is a call for the consultative report among Asian nations. Uh, Korea wants to be the world's top of the world. Uh, he is the uh, most prominent and the superior uh, institution in global rights uh, R&D. And also, the particularly we work hard to help the Asian rights farmers as well as the, the poor, uh, who are really dependent on the rights as their main, main step to poor. So the, I'm quite sure the uh, international rights research is to, uh, will really help us in overcoming the current uh, food crisis as well as the future food crisis in the Bangladesh last year 
12 months, we had two floods and a devastating cyclone, which uh, really declined the domestic production of rice. We had to go for large imports. Within the last nine months, we already have imported about 2.7 million tons. And more imports are coming, but it is not very difficult, it is not easy to import because most rice surplus consider imposed ban on exports. So we are having special negotiations with India, Vietnam, Myanmar, and Thailand to bring in more import. But uh, there may not be a shortage of supply, not much shortage of supply, but prices will be high. Compared to last year, it's almost double. So the international prices have gone up. The real problem is that uh, real issues are affordability. People cannot afford to buy rice at that high price. So there is no shortage of much shortage of supply. So there is some panic uh, in the country, and uh, they are worried about the future. And uh, traders are also keen on increasing profits. I must say that Japan the experience shows uh, very clearly the importance of R and D. With Japan has a long history uh, of cooperation work with E. I must say that now is a good opportunity for us to recognize again the importance of an R and D together with E to cooperate with the uh, last year we were given farmers free certified seeds. Uh, and then other finalization of uh, extension services to enable farmer to to implement new technology and some come from Italy and also building and rehabilitation of uh, realize the more structure has not only affected the Philippines but has, has been affecting all the other countries that are seated uh, and represented on the on this table and on this board. Uh, what is key for me to note as I listen to all of them was that we are grappling all with the same situation. On the issue of prices, it is the common consensus of the board members that, uh, as Dr. Shilhuzaman has said, we are looking at a situation of uh, firm prices at least in the next 18 to 24 months. Uh, what is also key is the fact that all of us are trying to look for innovative solutions in our countries on how to address uh, not only the issue of supply, but the issue of prices. On how to bridge the gap of ensuring that uh, food for families get to eat, uh, and how this is really affecting the poor of our country. But what is also very clear this afternoon as we sat here uh, in the meeting is that there are solutions, and we can move forward from where we are today. Which is why the e-report is very strong in coming up with partnerships on technology. And in fact, with the Philippines, we have a collaboration. Phil Rice and the International Rice Research Institute is collaborating very strongly in addressing issues of uh, coming up with not only planting technology, but also coming up with the right seeds. The weather has changed uh, how we should plant the weather has made it imperative that we come up with better quality seeds, short staging seeds, seeds that can weather disease, seeds that can weather changes in temperature, seeds that can weather less water in different types of condition, seeds that can weather areas that have been invaded by salinity. And we have these uh, programs and in the coming weeks, uh, the President will be visiting the International Rice Research Institute to sign a stronger agreement, firming up uh, all of these agreements between Phil Rice uh, and Erie.